In The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, if you fail to stop Majora, the moon falls onto Clock Town and is implied to destroy the entire world. A tragic end to this hauntingly beautiful piece of art. Uh, hold on. Roll that back. That's supposed to be the moon? It's barely bigger than Clock Town. Clock Town? The town that takes a literal child 30 seconds to run all the way across? This thing is positively tiny. Can something this small really be a moon? Would it even destroy the planet, let alone Termina? Today, we're going to answer these questions. And if you stick around to the end, we're going to see how much damage the moon from Majora's Mask would do to real life Earth. Now, my initial impression in seeing this is this... This cannot be a moon. It's just way too small. Despite this, it's clear that the people of Termina believe this to be a moon. In fact, their only visible moon. There is mention of the moon being associated with the carnival. The mayor's chair has a smiling, happy version of this moon on the back of it. The people of Termina believe this is their moon. But do you know what we used to believe? Uh, what the f <laughs> I don't think I can say any of this on YouTube. So instead, let's find out if something this small can really be called a moon. The first thing I wanted to do when asking this question was figure out exactly how small the moon in Majora's Mask is. If we can estimate how big the moon is, we can learn a lot about it. Luckily, we can do some simple math to figure out roughly how big it is. Uh, also, for all the math in this video, I, I'm not an engineer, I'm a gamer. We are going to assume that Termina follows all the same rules as our universe. The planet it's on is roughly the same size as Earth. Their moon has the same density as our moon, etc. Also, in our universe, for cosmically large mathematical interactions of astral bodies, that's a sentence, because it's not directly observable, it's way more complicated. If you do better math, please comment and uh, let me know. Now, the only spot where we can directly compare the size of the moon to anything else is when it's falling on Clock Town. You can see the outer walls of Clock Town and make a direct comparison. So the next thing to figure out is how big is Clock Town? The outer walls of Clock Town form a regular dodecagon. So by determining the length of just one wall, we can figure out the distance across and compare that to the moon. Child Link is estimated to be just under four feet tall. There are a bunch of theories on Link's height, but I elected to use this height from reddit user lalam24 where they determine that child link is three foot eight inches tall or 111 centimeters if we move along this outer wall we can determine that this wall is 22.671 links wide uh this is not a standard unit of measure so obviously we're gonna have some measurement error we're just trying to get a rough estimation so that makes this wall a little over 25 meters wide which we can use to figure out that from point to point, it's about 97 meters across Clock Town. So yeah, Cl Clock Town is smaller than a running track. So now we can compare this to the best shot we have of Clock Town and the moon next to each other. Assuming the moon is a perfect sphere, if you look straight on, you can see pretty close to its diameter. Again, not perfect math, but close enough to get a rough estimate of size. So if we put Clock Town, or uh, in this case, brown pixels of Clock Town, dang, that's low res. Uh, you can see that the moon is about one clock town plus 310 out of 756 pixels. If we do the math, the moon in Majora's Mask has a diameter of 138.1 meters and a radius of 69 meters. Now, this thing is tiny. If we assume that the moon in Majora's Mask has the same density as Earth's moon, we can figure out that its mass is about 4.6 billion kilograms or a little over 10 billion pounds now that that sounds like a lot but uh the moon could literally fit inside of the las vegas sphere and doesn't even weigh as much as one of the pyramids in egypt if we compare the mass of this moon to earth's moon earth's moon is 15 quadrillion times more mass this is, I mean, it's just absolutely tiny now since the mass of the moon is what causes tides i wonder if termina has tides moving on so is something this small really a moon how big does something have to be to be considered a moon well 
According to NASA, there are 891 moons in our solar system. Most of these moons have been discovered since Majora's Mask was released, which I think is kind of funny. The smallest named moon I could find is orbiting Saturn, and it's named a gay eon pretty sure i'm pronouncing that right now it's pretty small but there are other unnamed moons that are pretty close to the same size as the moon in majora's mask so this moon would barely count as a moon but it would still be one the word moon isn't descriptive it's not scientific when we say moon what we mean is a natural satellite of a planet and a planet is a, a satellite of a star the word moon has its roots in language origins as opposed to anything scientific. In the real world, the English word moon comes from the root word from Proto-Indo-European language, mensis, which means month. This root is also the origin for the word measure. Fittingly, it refers to measuring time. There is evidence to suggest that humans have been observing the patterns of the moon for almost 30,000 years, which is a preposterously long time. Humankind has been creating impressions of the moon in religion, spiritualism, timekeeping. Professor Shikashi even tells us this in-game. Some people worship the moon, some people fear the moon, and the same is true of humans throughout time. The people of Termina are no different. They feel a supernatural presence from the moon. On the third day, you can really feel this from the townspeople of Clocktown. Those who stay are in shock denial or filled with existential dread. Hey, do you want to be filled with existential dread? Check this out. This is a physics simulation done by NASA showing how Earth's moon may have been formed. Essentially, you have this flaming ball of rock hitting the flaming ball of rock that is Earth, which we know that the moon collided with Earth at some point because there are rocks on the moon that are dated to be older than the moon and originate on Earth. This simulation also gives a really clear idea of how something so massive could have maintained a stable orbit over 4 billion years. I would say I'm a pretty optimistic person. I have a happy life. I'm very fortunate. Watching this simulation has filled me with the most existential dread I've ever felt in my life. Like, it's one thing to know how insane space is, but it's another to think about it in the context of the moon falling. If for some reason that happened, we would be completely toast. The amount of force to do that with our moon is astronomically high, especially considering it's been on a stable orbit for 4 billion years. But would the moon on Majora's mask destroy a planet, or even Termina, since it's just so small? Well, the only thing we haven't calculated yet is the speed at which the moon falls. We know that it takes 72 hours for the moon to fall from its original orbit to contact with Termina. We also know that this moon is in geosynchronous orbit because it's visible all times of the day. We can infer that its orbital speed is the same speed that the Earth is rotating. A geosynchronous orbit on Earth is achieved at about 35,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So we're going to use this number and the 72-hour time interval to figure out that the moon in Majora's Mask is traveling at 138 meters per second. Using all of the numbers we found so far, we can figure out that the impact energy when the moon collides with Termina is over 43 quadrillion joules, which is about 10 and a half kilotons of TNT going off at once. Using a recreated version of this image by Reddit user Maxzilla, we can estimate the blast radius from impact. Here's what the blast radius would look like. The crater would destroy the entirety of Termina Field and the entrance to each surrounding area, spanning 322 meters wide and 69 meters deep. Anyone who made it this far at a Termina field would have severe lung damage, but could survive. And past this point, if you don't get hit by something falling over or get launched into a structure, you probably survive. Of course, it would still be an insane amount of wind and pressure blasting past you, and you'd probably be severely injured. The caves and the buildings in Termina wouldn't really be safe because almost all of them would collapse from the shockwave the blast radius would extend completely off the playable area of the map. Wind speeds up to 822 meters per second would knock over every tree until this point outside the edges of the map. You would probably have to make it past this point to guarantee survival. The best idea would be to leave as early as possible, head out the south gate and towards the Romani Ranch, go straight through to the forest south of the ranch, 
and don't stop until you're out of the blast radius or not near any large trees. If you're trying to make a last minute getaway due to poor planning, head to the west. Get in the water, swim out as far as you can, maybe to Pinnacle Rock, and hope that being below the surface for most of the impact will shield you from the shockwave and debris. I worry that anywhere around the Stone Tower Temple would collapse or have too many falling rocks, and anywhere around Snowhead would just be surrounded with avalanches. You would not be safe at all. Also, it's important to remember that a real impact like this would be at least 10 times faster, which exponentially increases the amount of impact force and impact energy. In all likelihood, at least Termina and the surrounding areas are completely destroyed. So, what if the moon from Majora's Mask hit Earth? So now, we're going to use the very scientific tool of Asteroid Launcher to destroy my least favorite city on Earth. As you can see, the moon in Majora's Mask doesn't even destroy half the city. It's possible that those in surrounding towns don't even really notice what happened. Let's launch it again. The closest city I could find to Clock Town is Monowi, Nebraska, which has like two blocks. Looking at how small this town is really does give you a weird feel for how small video game maps are, especially older ones. I think it's really cool how big they can feel despite literally being very small areas. Like Clock Town, Monowi is completely destroyed, but most of Nebraska isn't even gonna notice. It would take tens of thousands of this moon to destroy a planet or even make it inhospitable for life. This moon would definitely destroy most of, if not all of Termina, but it, it's not gonna destroy the planet. If you're a resident of Clock Town or a tourist traveling through, if you made it just a little ways outside the field, you're probably gonna survive. In a game with so much tragedy, it's comforting to know that if people just left on the third day, they would have a decent chance of surviving, assuming they made it far enough away. Something that makes me happy amongst the tragedy and trauma present in the game is that Link gets to be a positive force in nearly everyone's life. In a research paper by Dr. Jillian Sandstrom from 2023, they found that having a brief, genuine interaction with strangers leads to greater life satisfaction. It could be a conversation or even just a friendly hello. The research suggests that both are indicative of greater life satisfaction. So even if Link isn't solving everyone's problems in the game, just by saying hello, he's helping the people of Termina. So the next time you're on a walk or on a bus, say hello. Tell them why the moon doesn't fall. You can do it. The benefits of even minimal social interaction are significant. And you never know whose day you're going to make a lot better just by saying, hi. This was Vicarious. Thank you for watching. Hey, let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I don't want to learn any more about space, so this is going to be the last space video from me. But I did really like the research from uh, Dr. Sandstrom. Her website and publications are linked below, and I would highly recommend checking them out. Uh, I'm going to leave a little bit of notes about my methods in the description if you want to say I'm bad at math. That's fine. Oh, are you locked out? What are you doing? You say creeping? Yum, 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 yum